Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you how you can simply blend your objects with your landscape. As always, here's the preview. As you can see here in my project, I have an object. When I pull this up, you can see how it looks without the blending. And when I bring this down to the landscape, you can see how it seamlessly blends with the landscape. This works for a lot of objects and I can move them to any texture I like. As you can see here, or as you can see here. And that's everything. Let's get started. Back in our project with the landscape where we have the RVT landscape. The first thing we want to do is duplicate the RVT landscape and call this RVT underscore height. Like so. Open this one up. And inside here, we want to set the world height like this. You can decrease this one. And then what we want to do is we want to select the landscape, scroll down to the virtual texture part, add a new element, and then select the RVT height. Create volumes. So we have the volume also for the height. And we rename the volume like so the next thing we want to do is import something from quixel so go ahead and open quixel up here under 3d assets something like nature and then i select rock and let's get some queries select it download and add it to the project. You can of course take something else. Once you've downloaded the object, let's go to Megascans, 3D assets, and then let's pull the thing in. So as you can see, nothing happens. It doesn't blend and we will change this now. So let's first look for the parent material. Under general, you can search for this material and we want to take this one to our landscape and say advanced copy. After we successfully copied the uh, material, we go back to the landscape folder and inside here we open the MS default. What we want to do here is we want to search first for the blend material attributes. And we want to use the normal texture as the B output. And then we plug this in here. While we're testing the system, let us add a vector parameter into the A. And let's use a yellow color. From the parameter, we want to make material attributes and plug the base color in here and then get these into the A pin. Now let's work on the alpha, which will be our blend. For that, we will use the runtime virtual texture sample and this time we will use the height map. What we also need is the absolute world position so search for world position and from the z value we want to subtract and we want to plug in the world height if you don't have this z value here you can mask the xyz and use only the b channel which is the same as the z channel then let's divide the subtraction and for the B part let's get a scala scala parameter calling this one sharpness and the default value will be something like 15 and from this this one we want to saturate and then we can test this out hit apply go back to your landscape Let's create an instant out of our material and then let's click on the 
folder here, search for the material, and then we change the one it uses here. So we will, whoops, we will use the material instance we just created. So now, as you can see, we have the this yellow color that is moving with the landscape. Ah, pretty nice. Okay, get back to the landscape and inside here, we now want to change our yellow color. Instead of the yellow color, we want to have again a runtime virtual texture sample. And here we want to have the normal landscape color. And then just plug in the base color, the specular, the roughness. And for the normal, we want to transform again. But this time, not from tangent space to world space, but from world space to tangent space. Plug this in. And now let's get back to our landscape. And as you can see, has now the texture from the landscape on the object. So now we are almost finished. We can now work on some more properties here to refine our blending. I show you one simple way of doing some fine tuning here, but there are infinite ways of doing it. And I recommend you to search for other approaches if this special thing doesn't fit your needs. So the first thing we want to do here is get the object bounce like this. From that, we want to component mask. So we only get the Z value. And then we want to add it here to our subtraction. So we add this one like this, get some space and then from the add, we want to subtract again. And we want to multiply a scalar parameter to it. So we can change the actual height of it. Can give us some default value of 1.5. And then connect this inside here. Then we plug this into the divide from the sharpness and then we want to saturate. Next we want to get the vertex normal and again we want to mask, so copy and paste it. And then we want to multiply this by also again a scalar parameter. And this one will be our stretching. Give it a value of one. And again, we want to saturate. Uh, what the saturate does, it clamps between zero and one, as it states here. And now we multiply those two. Get it back into the alpha. And as you can see, we have now not the best thing, but we have a lot of things different. As you can see, it's moving at the bottom, but not on the top. So for this, we need to inverse our first sample. So we put in one minus, which uh, inverse uh, white to black and black to white. And then we want to do the same for after we multiply it. And what this now does is it changes first the runtime virtual texture from black to white. And then we multiply with the vertex normal, which is the opposite. And then we change it back to what it was before. And as you can see now, we have a much cleaner transformation here. Now for this object, go to the content browser, open the instance, this one. And then let's look for the global scalar parameters like height, sharpness and stretching. Here now you can play with those values. And as you can see, it changes the position of the object. So if I pull in 10, 
you can see it will go to the height of 10. So when I pull out, you can see here is the position of this height. So let's get something like 1.5 again, or let's say 1.2. For the sharpness, you can increase it. It will stretch the maximum sharpness of the edge. But let's leave it on 60. And for the stretching, you can change it and you see it will get a little bit bigger, stretch this more around the edges. And I think a value of 1 or maybe 1.5 looks quite, quite nice. And that's basically everything you have to do. You can now play from here and as you can see our object not from this side, but from this side, looks pretty much damn good. See you in the next one.